Given our own ambivalent attitude to learning Irish, this class is certainly an eye-opener. 35 students from as far apart as Japan and the US, paying over £400 each to spend a month learning Irish in the heart of the Connemara Gaeltacht. Organised by University College Galway, the course is taking place in the village of Carraroe. And it's obvious to even the most casual eavesdropper that the students are making considerable progress. The routine here is quite rigorous. Classes begin at 9am and several evenings a week continue until 9pm. The students are mainly channeled here through European and US universities and are interested in minority languages for teaching or research purposes. Others come because their forebears came from Ireland. There are some lighter moments too and language specialist Breed Niwalia can quickly exploit the opportunities for conversation provided by a Swedish miniskirt. <laughs> Well, um, ni, 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 um, skirt machine, a skirt as a a skirt as an as an halibon, skirt as an halibon. Oh, we must do a dance. One of the most amazing discoveries of the course was that Barcelona baker Raymond Lecce and Californian architect Bill Diaz could only communicate through Irish. Raymond has virtually no English, and Bill hasn't a word of Spanish. So most days they practice their Irish on each other. Spanish. 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 Agus now, Chiro from Japan is another student who can now speak almost more Irish than English. Now, can you explain to us why you've decided to learn Irish? Well, it's difficult to say because, oh, oh. Uh, I don't have uh, an English word. <laughs> uh. Virtually all of the group are determined to continue with their study of Irish until they become fluent enough to speak it or teach it. And one girl, Dorothy Trachnick from Germany, has already mastered Scots Gaelic as part of her Celtic studies. Well, when I left school, I had a great interest in minority languages in general, and I looked around in Europe, you know, which minority languages do exist, and that's how it happened. I was listening to Irish music as well, and it was really... Uh, like a, a great feeling, you know, to know something not everybody knows. And what, what are you going to use the language for? Well, I hope that I might get a chance to um, teach it again to pupils, to students who've got an interest in it. At uh, university level? Yes, at university level then.
And Swedish-born Karen Hansen fell in love with Ireland and the Irish language after discovering U2. I'm just doing it for fun. And then I, I got interested in Ireland and I saw an advertisement in the paper from the phone and I thought, wow, I'm going to buy it. And I, and I buy the course and that's about six months ago. And then I got to know about this course and thought, oh, I have to go. So I did that. What's this about your love affair with you two? Oh, I'm a big fan. And then, of course, I got interested in Ireland. And was, I wanted to go to Dublin and all that. Yeah. And this must surely rate as one of the most unusual versions of Peggy Letcher Ward. Oh,